Welcome back to another full review, if you are new to this channel Car Pro, take a few seconds now to subscribe. Subscribe now and ring the bell to get notified whenever we post new car reviews. Today we're in the brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla Hatchback. There are plenty of changes for the 2023 Corolla Hatch. It's still incredible reliability that what the Corolla is known for after all. You also get 2 years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well. In this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one, from acceleration to braking, steering, ride quality, sound system and exhaust. Let's just jump right into it and as always, let's start with price. There are, simply two trim levels for the 2023 Corolla hatch. First one is the SE starting at $23,500. Then the second one is the XSC starting at $26,500. But regardless of the trim level, the power plant is going to be the same a 2 liter naturally aspirated. Inline 4 cylinder putting out 169 horsepower at 6,600 rpm 151 pound per feet of torque coming in at 4,800 rpm power set. To the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.5 seconds, with mile per gallon numbers differing actually between the trim levels for the SC coming in at 32 in the city and 41 on the highway, while for the XSE it is 30 in the city and 38 on the highway, using regular unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or to choose a drive mode. A toggle switch located directly in front of the shifter that is going to give you eco, normal and sport mode. I selected the sport mode, it did just keep in mind it's a CDT so it's simulated shifting but it's holding the RPM at a much higher level so it will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response and also the steering sensitivity as well so now that I've got all that done. Let's go ahead and test it in the rain and sleet. As I'm driving through it right now let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's also see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. To put it in full manual shift mode just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. It's showing I'm in first gear, that. So to put it back where the car has full control just slide the shifter back to the right. Now you're out of the full manual shift mode but still decent acceleration again. This acceleration is going to be perfectly fine if you've driven a Corolla SC before so 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds that's great for this car and again the paddle shifters actually are decent. They are not the quickest reactive paddle shifters but they're not slow either and again it didn't feel like I was driving a CBT there, it felt like I was driving a traditional automatic and it was shifting through actual gears. So that was well done Toyota. I definitely liked the way that worked and I was in sport. Driving mode, to have all that. Acceleration is always braking is. Equally important so up front you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs and in the back 10.5 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping disc. The braking is on the firm side but just it doesn't bring you to as quick of a stop as you would probably expect in this car. That's typically like most three row SUV kind of good. For the suspension and handling up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes, it actually has a bit too bad of our short little test drive. I mean in cars like this compact cars you are going to feel a little bit more of the road but it's perfectly acceptable. For me personally, it's that would not bother me. As far as cabin. Noise going 50 miles per hour right now while raining heavy, I will say that it is actually in the compact cars, you typically are going to hear a little bit more in the cabin than you otherwise would in a larger sedans, for the steering, let me actually try to put it in sport. Driving mode, it is a noticeable difference with the steering feel now, even in sport driving mode it still kind of tends to lean on the looser side, I wouldn't mind, a bit heavier of a steering feel in the Corolla hatch. For the visibility I could see perfectly fine out the back this is a smaller car so you really shouldn't have any issue. There, I will take a look now at the exterior of a brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Let's go ahead and start with where this one is actually made. Taking a glance at the VIN number their first character is the letter J indicating that the Corolla hatch is built and assembled still in Japan. Now let's go ahead and start up by looking at the front. It has a gloss black front grill that will come standard, the 
Sides LED headlights with LED daytime running lights also coming standard. They have some automatic feature. When it starts to get dark and at night headlights will turn on automatically. Also automatic high beam. So when you have your high beams on at night that says there's a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone automatically goes back up to high beam. Such a great feature. Down below them you will see the LED fog lights only if you go with the XSE model, so you will not get them with our SE trim level that we have today. You can install them for extra price if you cargo capacity comes in at 17.8 cubic feet. For more space, the rear seats do fold down for a bit of extra space. Also you got some cargo lighting back there. There is some hidden storage found on both rear corners back there at well for a little extra storage. If you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire under there, making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 29.9 inches, slightly bigger than Ford Mustang GT as a reference. It has a rear center armrest with cup holders. Actually does come standard so I like that as well and there are a dual rear USB charging ports that come standard on the Corolla hatch as well. So well done Toyota for that. Now making our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard on the SE. 8-way power driver seat with its soft hex finish. Coming on the XSE, you get heated front seats for that XSE trim level as well. It was perfectly comfortable in this thing, so no issues specifically for me then. Taking a look at the steering wheel it tilts and telescoping. It is leather, wrapped for both trim levels as well. Now making our way to the startup let me start by showing you the key. Here you got your Toyota logo, lock and unlock but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. Simply, put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee, and once started up there's going to be two different gauge configurations depending upon which trim level. So for the SC obviously you're going as you can see. You got your tachometer all the way to your left speedometers to the right and there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounts controls found on the left side of the steering wheel you can toggle between a digital speedometer, how many miles your tank will hit empty, your outside temperature, a trip B. There's safety information, radio information, pretty much everything you could possibly want on that small digital portion of the gauges, but it is better for the XSE because with that one you do get a full 7 inch digital gauge cluster. Checking now the overall interior quality. Let me start by saying frameless rear view mirror with home link controls that's an option that gives $175 if one at wireless phone charger for the XSE, automatic climate control. For the SE meaning you set a temperature it's going to automatically keep it for you but then you get dual zone control, one for the driver and the other for the passenger. The XSE you get some new red accents replacing the previous blue accents from the 2022 model. In front of the shifter you got a little bit of storage, just two. The right of that shifter is actually where you plug in a phone charging port. It looks like they went to USB-A from USB-C last year so that's another change. I like the gloss black surround surrounding the shifter as well. That's very high quality. You got dual cup holders, electro-mechanical parking brake, and within the center armrest, there is another phone charging port and a 12 volt charging port in there as well. It is on the basic side of plastic door handles and plastic on the doors. Things like that actually don't mind it. I like the two tone color theme. I think that's part of it as well, even with the seats and everything else to go along with it. It looks very good with the color theme. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the information screen. You got an 8 inch color touchscreen display. It comes standard of both trim level, Bluetooth and audio streaming, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So that's definitely a big plus here in the 2023 version. You can also check out your driving statistics up there through the car icon. You can see that on the screen there as well, your radio information. When it comes to the sound systems there's two of them. You got six speakers for the SE and then eight speaker JBL sound system for the XSE. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio to see what we got, and let's test out the clarity of it, not that bad for a 6 speaker sound system there was a decent amount of bass their clarity was actually pretty good, obviously the JBL is going to be better but 6 speakers actually 
works pretty well for the Corolla hatch. When you do put this car in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety. Their front side current airbags do come standard. You got a driver's knee airbag up front as well passenger seat cushion airbag and rear seat mounted side airbag that last one is usually like a 600 option with Mercedes and BMW so that's pretty cool also in the back latch aka lower anchors tethers for children there is a tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard for 2023 is the new Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 that is new for 2023 that's going to include proactive driving assist, pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, dynamic radar cruise control, roadside assist and then lane tracing assist, as well then in addition to that the XSE is going to add a blind spot, monitoring system with rear cross, traffic alert and so when it comes to my final thoughts here are the Corolla hatch known for incredible reliability. So you always got that especially with the Corolla whether it be the sedan or the hatchback. This thing is going also excellent safety IHS top safety pick plus it doesn't get any better than that, as well new. Digital gauges are great, they have that now JBL sound system. Is going to be incredible in this thing. But even the 6 speaker sound system was pretty good as well, as far as room for improvement goes the rear seat leg room is kind of cramped. But the Corolla sedan wear. You're going to get more legroom than in the Corolla hatch. Are you a car enthusiast? If so, you'll want to check out our new car review videos. We explore some of the coolest cars on the market today, helping you to make an informed decision on your own vehicle. Join Car Pro Channel now for the best new car reviews. Please take a few seconds and support us by like, share, and subscribe to Car Pro Channel. And thanks you for watching.